I'm collaborating with Aaron from the 6061 YouTube channel and we're making the F-bomb. We chose this project primarily for the funny name, but it's not a real bomb and we have no intention of hurting anyone. The forming and welding shown in these videos can be applied to all kinds of projects. Aaron's YouTube videos are filled with fantastic information about fabricating and welding metal and he has a unique style that's fun to watch. In the last video, I showed four different techniques to make the rear section of the bomb. This time, we'll join those parts together and shape the metal for the front. I made all of these pieces oversized, and my goal is to have a welded seam that goes right down the center of this long station. So I'm going to put this into place, and I'm going to center it so the overlap is about the same on all four sides. Then I'll hold it into place with spring clamps, and I want to make a line right down the center of this long station. So the station is made out of half inch thick wood. I'm going to use quarter inch masking tape and I'll just pull a straight line with the tape such that the tape is flush with one edge of the plywood and then when I lay the tape down the other edge of the tape should be right on the center line of that station. I'll use the scriber to give me a line I can trim on now I can peel the tape off and trim on that line. So let's check this on the buck. And just like I wanted, that line is right in the center of the long station. So now I'll use the trimmed edge of the first piece to mark the edge of the second piece. So I'll put the second piece into place. And again, I'll center it so the overlap is about the same on all sides. And I'll hold it into place with clamps. Then I can overlay the first piece and set it up so the edge is centered on the station. Then I'll hold these tightly together and scribe the first piece against the second piece. And now I can trim the second piece. Now I'll we'll check to see how these fit together, and it's an excellent fit, so I can tack weld these parts together now. I've actually rotated this so the joint is not right on top of the station, otherwise I'd char the station with the heat of the tack welding. So I'll clamp this into place. I'll give this a quick wire brushing to clean it, and I'll put some additional clamps at the end of the joint. I'll tap this a little to adjust it. That looks good. So I'll put my safety gear on and make some tack welds. Okay, the tacks are finished. I'll pull this off the buck now and work this joint with a hammer and dolly to make sure everything is level before I make the finish weld. So I've reversed this part and clamped it to the buck to give me access to this joint. All right, that looks really good. So I'm ready to make the finish weld. I'll weld this last little bit off the buck so I don't burn it. And now I'll fusion weld the inside of this. Okay, that's finished. I'll cut this weld down with 50 grit abrasive now. Now I'll use the planishing hammer to crush the weld completely flat. I've ground the weld flat on this side but you can see there's still a little projection of the weld on the inside. So I'll crush that weld until it's completely flat. So the weld is completely smooth on both sides now. I love the way the first two pieces are fitting together and the way they fit the buck. And my plan was to join the third piece to the first two at this time. But I've changed my mind on that. 
The problem is, these fit together at a shallow angle, and if I form a ring assembly from the front three parts, and then overlap it on the tail cone, if I scribe that edge and trim it, they won't fit together well because of the material thicknesses. So the new plan is to fit the first and second piece to the tail cone now, and to fit the third piece afterward. That'll give me a little more wiggle room at the last step, so that's the approach I'm going to take. I've trimmed this edge back so it's centered on the wooden station underneath it. I'm going to scribe these pieces together now. I'm going to start with a witness mark so I know how these fit together. And then I'll scribe these parts together. So I have all the edges trimmed and I'm ready to tack weld this together. I'm going to snug these parts up on the buck by tightening this knob. I'm going to make certain that my witness mark is aligned. And that's all looking really good. So I'm going to put some tack welds on this. I've worked all the tack welds with a hammer and dolly, so I'm ready to finish weld it now. So the weld is finished. I've sanded the outside flat. The next step is to crush the weld completely flat, inside and out, and I'll use the planishing hammer for that. So I smoothed that joint out pretty nicely. And the next step is going to be to fit the last piece into place here. I've got the ends trimmed already. I'm going to overlap the fit on this point, get it clamped into place. And then I'll scribe this edge. So I'll trim this edge now, and then I can weld the last part into place. So the last piece is tack welded into place. I've gone over all of the joints with a hammer and dolly to level them out. So this is ready for the finish welding now. So the weld is finished. And just like before, I'll sand the weld flush on the outside and work it with a hammer and dolly to smooth it out. So I've worked the weld down flat and I've smoothed this area the best I can with a hammer and dolly. And to give it the final finish, I'm going to go over it with a file, which will reveal any low spots. So there really aren't a lot of low spots, but the few that I see I can raise with a bullseye pick. And I'll file this again. It looks much better. There's just a couple tiny little low spots I want to raise. And I'll file again. So this section looks really good. I'll rotate this and go all the way around it. And I'll metal finish the entire surface. And I'll take the file marks out with a disc sander. And to give this the final finish, I'll go over it with an orbital sander. I'm very happy with the surface finish I have on this. So the next thing I'm going to do is describe the bottom edge for trimming. So I'm just riding my scriber along the edge of the buck. And that will give me a perfect line to trim on. It's time to make a pattern for the nose of the buck. I put a temporary station into place. This will help keep the pattern paper up in the area where it needs to be. So I'll lay a piece of paper over the buck. I'll get it just visually centered. And I'll put some push pins into place to hold the paper temporarily. I'll start in the center. 
Then I want to get each side sort of centered so the loose paper is about equal on both sides. So it looks like that's pretty centered there. I'll put a push pin into place. Do the same on this other side. So the paper is pretty centered. Now I'll use this pencil that I've ground one side off of to start marking the edges of the pattern. So you can see the lines on the edge of the pattern. When I trim this out, I'm going to trim about a half inch outside of each of these lines, so I'll have a little extra metal when I start the forming. I'm going to be using a full-size English wheel to shape the next piece of metal, and this machine has several advantages over the benchtop model I showed earlier. Because the frame is larger and stronger, the wheels are configured in a different way. The wheels for the benchtop machine have a spherical profile, and the wheels for this machine have flat spots in them. It takes a strong frame to utilize the flat spots on the wheels. That's why the benchtop machine doesn't have them. But the flat spots allow you to cover more material with every pass, and it really speeds the shaping process. So I'm going to start tracking on this panel, and it's going to take a lot of work to bring in the depth that it needs to fit the buck. So I'm using fairly high pressure to start. I don't want to fool around here. I want to get in there and do some serious business right from the start. So I made several tracks in this direction. I'm going to cross my tracks now, wheel in a different direction. I'll pull it out and wheel in another direction. I'm going to wheel in yet another direction. So I'll try this on the buck for the first time to get some sense of how we're going. It certainly is moving in the right direction, but we have really not even half the shape we need, almost half. So I'm just going to keep on going, and the more I wheel it, the more I'll get curvature from right to left, and the more I'll get curvature from front to back. And I'll keep alternating the directions of the tracking. I can bring the shape up more evenly by constantly changing the direction of my tracking. Okay, let's try this on the buck again. It is getting better. So I have more than half the shape I need. So I'll keep wheeling in the same way I have been, and I'll gradually bring this up to full depth. So I've spent several more minutes shaping this, and I have almost the depth that I need. Let's put this on the buck and check it with our template. You can see that we're just about where we need to be with the template. It might need to go another sixteenth of an inch, but we're very, very close. So I've been working at very high pressure on the machine to make the metal move fast. I'm going to lower the pressure somewhat and keep working this to smooth it out and bring it up to the final contour. So I've been working just on the front of this, tracking in two different directions at lighter pressure. And let's check to see how it's fitting the buck. Seems pretty good. Seems excellent. And I'm going to work the back of it now, and I can use a lower crown wheel for the back. Up in this highly crowned area in the front, I have to use a highly crowned wheel. But in the lower part, in the rear part where the crown is lower, I can use a lower crown wheel, and that will give me a smoother finish in this area. I think you can see that I have a much smoother finish now. Let's check it and see how the fit is on the buck. Need a little more curl on these edges. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And I'd say that contour is excellent. 
So this piece is shaped up beautifully and we have two more to go. The final piece is tack welded into place on one side and I have it all fixtured up here. I pulled it tight against the buck with clamps and a band clamp so now I can scribe the final edge for trimming. So I'll trim on this edge and then tack weld the last seam. So all the joints are tacked and I've worked all the joints with a hammer and dolly and it's fitting the buck perfectly. Now it's time to finish weld the joints and smooth the welds off. The welds are smoothed off and I think this part's looking pretty good. Let's test fit it against the other part so we can get some sense of how they fit together. And I think it's looking pretty darn good. Now I know it's going to take a little adjusting to get this side to fit this side perfectly. So I've left a section of this unwelded. That'll give me a little wiggle room so I can adjust the diameter of this part to make it fit precisely against this part. So this would be a good time to scribe this edge for trimming. So after I trim this edge, then I'll start thinking about how I'm going to hold these parts together. So that wraps that up for this video. Next time, I'll finish the fuselage, then I'll ship it to Aaron at 6061 so we can add his special touches and bring this project to its conclusion. If you enjoy my videos, please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when I post a new project. If you like, you can support these videos through Patreon. Just click the link at the end of the video. I'll see you next time.